Good evening. Welcome to Belfast, the new SSE arena. We are here to celebrate the homecoming of the Belfast Giants for the 2015-2016 season. I'm Simon Kitchen. With me is Paddy Smith. Paddy, welcome back to the Belfast SSE Arena. We're going to get that wrong at some time, but we might as well throw it out there first of all. How are you feeling? I'm not too bad, mate. It's good to be back. Um, a wonderful new arena. Well, I say a new arena. It feels like a new arena. Of course, it's the, it's the old Odyssey Arena, but now the SSE Arena. and Totally refurbed and a brand new Belfast Giants side to skate out into it. You've, you've come in early today and you've seen a bit of the practice. Mm. And uh, obviously with the new players coming in and uh, quite a lot of new faces, who do you think is going to light the world up this year for you? We've just had a like say, we just had a good look at the at the practice and some really good new faces in there. Derek Walser, of course, coming in as player coach, he looks like the real deal. Saw him play a couple of seasons ago for Ice Bam Berlin. A real guy who can run it from the back, a guy with a great shot on him, good hands, good vision, and he's going to no doubt going to drive this team forward. Outside of that, you got some of the new British talent in, especially like said Jonathan Boxall, having played the last couple of seasons in Nottingham, a real hard working blue collar sort of player. And, even with that massive ginger beard, he's looking absolutely fantastic on the ice. And no doubt he's going to fit into the special teams as well. So really looking forward to seeing him play. Yeah, I mean, I've been down, I've been lucky enough to watch a couple of practices this week, Thursday and Friday. And, and you know, I've been really impressed with Chris Beach. Skating ability, I thought, was absolutely superb. Walzer, as you say, has been outstanding. But, you know, some of the guys that have come back in from last year, Colin Shields, Craig Peacock have been really, really working hard during the summer, and you can see that with their new gym sessions that are they're there on a daily basis. I've been very, very impressed with them too. We well, see with Shields and with Peacock them on Twitter all the time with their with their fitness organisation that they're doing and getting the guys involved and all the guys are there going through the motions. And you mentioned Chris Beach there. Well, what a player to bring into the Belfast Giants. A guy with an incredible amount of pedigree. The guy's played so many games in the in the NHL. He was part of a, a deal that involved Yarmia Yager going the other way, you know, so there's, there's the pedigree of the guy that we've got in. Has had some brilliant experience in Europe, winning a, a, a title in Sweden, I believe, and he's coming to this Belfast Giants side, and it was one of the signings that right across the league, everybody's eyebrows raised and said, well, here's a guy with you know, great talent, and it's good to see him, not just in the Belfast Giants, but in the elite league itself. Another, talking about eyebrows raised, an, another player coming in is uh, ex Fife Flyer, Matt Nickerson. Mm -hmm. And um, I, you know, compared to last season and, and watching him, he's just been training this year and obviously the couple of preseason games in last week, he's looking a lot fitter. He's a big unit, isn't he? He, he must stand yeah. close to seven foot and no skates. And a guy who at the Five Flowers developed a bit of a reputation for with his fists and being a physical sort of player, and maybe took a, a few suspensions, maybe warranted or not. But a guy who also has the ability with the stick and with the skates and. With Steve Thornton and Walter putting him there on the on the blue line with six import D shows that this guy is the real deal. He's lost a lot of weight. He's coming in here a lot fitter. He knows that with the Belfast Giants, you've you've got to be at a higher caliber. With all due respect to the five flyers, the Belfast Giants are at this moment in time playing at the opposite end of the table. Or I'm aiming for the opposite end of the table. And Matt Nickerson coming into a Belfast Giants arena, fans, all with high expectations. He's got to perform and by the looks of him, he's, it's exactly what he's here to do. And, and just coming back to the players who've been here, mm -hmm. played here, another one, Chris Higgins. Um, I've, I mean, Chris Higgins came, everybody forgot about him last year. Well, we tried to forget about him last year. <laughs> took and a year he, out, didn't he? He took a year out, and I think he went travelling. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, Chris Higgins, since he's come back as well, you know, I've watched him in training this week as well. He really looks as if he's up for it, and, and you know, really looking forward to being back in Belfast. The, the Belfast Datsuk, and he's back. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing him play. We, we, when he was here last time, we saw the, the, the flicks and the tricks and the flair that he could play with, and that sort of player that... Maybe we don't invest in enough in this league. A guy who has that those sort of on on the stick on the puck skills, and he did draw up a brilliant reputation with the Giants and a really good chemistry on that line he had with Chevrolet and with Soret. Now Walser has the real ability to put him on a line with somebody where again to try to to push those skills out to the floor, and hopefully we'll get to see that because in this league he's obviously got a reputation as being that flair player. As I've been well impressed with him, mm. um, and another one who who had a bit of a patchy season last year, and came in back into the lineup towards the end of the season was Stephen Murphy, mm. and um, you know Murph really looks as if he's up for this season as well. One of the things that Belfast chance last season made was the fact that when we lost Stephen Murphy, with all due respect to Carson Chewback, but when we lost Stephen Murphy, 
it did impact our season because that is the high calibre that we expect from Stephen Murphy and that we're used to from Stephen Murphy. So Murph coming back into this lineup, the intangibles that he gives us both between the pipes and out on the ice, the, the confidence that he gives the D, the confidence that he gives the fans, it's fantastic to see him there. No doubt, he, given last season and where it went for him, he's out to make a point this season. Well, we welcome a new team, um, a new coming, if you want to put it that way, for the Manchester Storm back to Belfast tonight. Uh, they played their last competitive game in the old era in the Odyssey Arena, and uh, they're now coming into the SSA Arena tonight. Manchester Storm, very close to your second home, your marital home, if you want to put it that way. Um, you, you've seen them in the last few weeks. What's your uh, thoughts on, on the Manchester Storm so far? Exactly what we'd expect from an Omar Pasha side. We saw with the whole Stingrays last season that he likes to catch teams on the break. He likes speed up front. He likes a, a quick transition from his defence, and that's what he's got. Uh, I watched them play the Nottingham Panthers in a pre-season game a couple of weeks ago, and let's be fair, when the Nottingham Panthers going in there with a well-established side and, and, and more imports and, and a more depth in, in British talent, I expected them, the Panthers, to come in and walk out the winners. And they didn't. Granted, they did put uh, Dan Green in net for the third period, but the Manchester Storm were there and they were with them and they went on to beat them on penalty shots. Great for first line in Davis, Salazar and Siska. Really quick really good chemistry between those two guys already. And also, like you say, the Storm coming into the SSE Arena, their last game, the 24th of October, 2002, the Belfast Giants beat them 7-2. And it you was a- had hair back then? I, I did have hair back Perfect. then. I'm sure, these, the I'm, I'm sure these guys behind the camera is probably a video footage of that as well. <laughs> I, mean, but they, <laughs> I mean, no furnace, they're a very young cameraman, so that you that they might true. not have, you know. That is true, but they came in here, they were beaten 7-2 by the Belfast Giants. And I remember very well because Stevie Lau was in that side at the time as well. It was really sad because there there were rumours going about about how the storm were, were falling by the wayside and then all, they must have known themselves because after the game they all came out for a team photograph knowing that was probably going to be as it was their last game. Great to see the storm back. Uh, working in Manchester like I do, I encounter people all the time, even when the Phoenix were, were playing in the EPL out of the Aldrin rink, um, I encounter people all the time asking, you know, are the storm still playing? Because they do have that sort of reputation within 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 Manchester in the days that they played out of the MEN arena and the nine X as it was as well. And I think that our good friend formerly of this parish, Neil Russell, is going to play on that nostalgia for quite a bit. I thought you were about to say play on the ice tonight, but the, no, I've well, seen the guy trying to skate. I'd really yeah. like to see that yeah. try. But I think he's going to play <laughs> on that nostalgia and rightly so because you can see in the Aldrigham Rink when I was there are so many old all sports uh, Manchester Storm shirts yeah. and guys who have like it was it, inside them they're just saying oh the Manchester Storm let's go and see them and they can play off that of course it's not the MEN arena for them so they're going to have to try to develop a new sort of fan base from it and try to remind people you know it's all about the game on the ice not the surroundings mm -hmm. and they're starting to do that the atmosphere against the Sheffield Steelers I believe was was very good and uh, it's just going to get better and better for them I'll be very interested to see how they play on the bigger ice pad. I believe this is going to be one of the first times they do that. So the Belfast Giants are going to have to really capitalise on that. But the Storm, good to see them back and we'll see where they go from there. Okay, we've already covered Belfast Giants versus the Manchester Storm. Paddy, your thoughts on the Devils versus the Panthers? The Devils are very difficult to beat in that big blue tent and the Panthers had their troubles with them last season but the dynamic between these two is very interesting because you've got players who have moved between the two teams. You've got Doucette who's come from the Panthers to the Devils, a real good goal scorer guy. When he came into the Panthers it's exactly the sort of sniper that they needed and you're no doubt that Andrew Lord has got him in there to do exactly the same thing in the Devils team. Meanwhile, moving from the Devils to the Panthers, you've got Matt Myers, a guy who was with the Panthers before, but a Cardiff boy born and bred, and he's going to do a job there as well. The Devils are very difficult to beat at this rink, mate. The ice, they, had their ice problems last, they had their ice problems last week. We know that Zach Fitzgerald tweeted about it and had a bit of a laugh about it. But I believe they've been dealt with this week in, in, with the whole place being shut down to look at it. But the Devils, nonetheless, in that small ice pad, the Panthers coming in, I think that's a Devils game. Well, I have to admit, I watched the Devils versus Steelers last week uh, on their webcast, and I've been really impressed with the Devils, the Cardiff Devils. Steelers get off to a pretty slow start, um, but Salters, you know, he, he, he did really well last yeah. year in Bray Head. I was impressed with him when he was at the Panthers, but I think that's a great addition for the Cardiff Devils. And then you've got the set. The guy scores goals for fun. He was outstanding last Saturday. I, think I have to agree with you there on, on Salters coming in. He's going to be one of the real 
real key players for the Devils this season. But also, you've also got someone coming back like Andrew Hotham, who last season for the Devils was absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. They're going to be very tough, and they're going to be there thereabouts come the end of the season. I have no doubt about that. I, I would definitely agree with you. I, my, uh, I think yeah, anybody above the Devils has got a real chance of winning this league this year. Coventry Blaze, elite league uh, playoff champions versus mm-hmm. last season's league champions. That's going to be a big game as well. And the dynamic on this one as well, you've got Paul Thompson coming back into his, his former parish and all the Blaze fans who know the successes that he had there. Meanwhile, you've got Chuck Webber who made, it, made that place his own and a, a real key part in what the Blaze organisation wanted to bring back to have that sort of behind-the-bench presence. Um, the Steelers coming off the CHL, tough time for them, let's be fair, but they did compete in the competing at that level of CHL against Finnish opposition, against uh, Swedish opposition. They did pretty well. Okay, they got beat. Let's be fair, they got beat. But they did hold their own. The Blaze, they've recruited quite interestingly. They've brought in players from the Gardner Conference, like Lukasiewicz and the likes. And you can see that experience that Chuck Weber wants to be put behind there. Now, last season was a bit difficult. Sorry, last week was a bit diff- difficult for them. They lost 6 nothing up in Fife. Uh, Brian Stewart, last season, one of the MVPs and probably the top goalkeeper in the league, not having the best of games. They, yeah. did, they did turn that around in the game at the Sky Dome the following night. But it's interesting to see what Chuck Webber's going to do with this place side because we know he's got the skills to be able to, to develop a team into a championship winning side. He did it with Mark LeFay's team last season. Can he do it and, and have the Blaze fighting at the top of the Elite League? Time will tell. Dundee Stars, Edinburgh Capitals, mm. two new coaches. Dundee Stars, uh, we were uh, up against both these teams last weekend. They beat us in Dundee, and then we went into Edinburgh the next night and uh, beat the Capitals. I was impressed with Dundee last week, I have to admit. Mark Lefebvre's put together a fantastic side, and he's starting from the goalkeeper as well. He's been having an absolutely phenomenal opening to the season. You can see that the way that Lefebvre, especially last season when he put together the, the Blaze side, you know, he was able to recruit very well and he's done that here as well. One of the big things for them is bringing in Doug Clarkson and he showed last, last week, both against the Giants and most notably against the Nottingham Panthers in setting one of the goals, that he's still got the skills and that's a big one for the Stars. The Caps, new look to the side, Riley Emerson running that team and yep. he's brought in a lot more, let's say, North American style where we had before the... European style of game, the Caps have tried to come up front and come right from the start of the season with that North American style. It hasn't worked out that well for them so far. They went in the Altrincham last week and got absolutely humped, 8-1 by the Storm who we play tonight. Um, again, it's another one of time will tell. You know that Emerson, a surprise to me as a choice as a coach, a guy of that size, of his of his skill set, I didn't think would move into coaching, but he's recruited well and we'll see what he can do from there. And finishing uh, the test fixtures with the uh, Five Flowers versus Brayhead Clan, you know, Five Flowers are all, but it doesn't make a difference who you are, what uh, rink you go into. Anytime you go to Fife, it's always going to be a tough game. You know, I both love that rink, mate. It's, it. It, it, it's the atmosphere within that in that rink of Kirkcaldy is unreal. And I know that in the last couple of years, the, the rivalry between Fife and Brayhead has been phenomenal. But I think a lot of that's been was built on the fact that you had Zach Fitzgerald and Brayhead and you had Matt Nickerson in Fife no longer there. So well, you're going to have that sort of, let's say, fire between these two sides will be seen in this game here. I know that Fife have been building it up quite a bit, calling it a derby day. Not necessarily a derby. They're 67 miles away from each other. But whether Brayhead can take the form that they had in the CHL, and they did beat Ingolstadt, and it was credit to them, if they can take that form from the CHL and apply it in the conference and in the league, I can only see Brayhead winning this game. Well, you've had your thoughts from myself and Paddy for the games today for the uh, Elite League fixture list. Uh, this is Giants TV, powered by CyrilJohnson.com. While it now may be called the SSE Arena, it's still the spiritual home of the Belfast Giants. And today we welcome back the Manchester Storm. Of course, this isn't the first time or the last time that the Storm will be here amongst these walls. The last time they were here was the 24th of October 2002, a 7-2 league win for the Belfast Giants. But unfortunately, it was also the final game that the Manchester Storm played in British hockey. Until now, back in the Elite League. The Manchester Storm themselves, of course, are synonymous within UK hockey. An ISL championship to their name under the stewardship of Kurt Kleinendorst. They are a name well known, not just around Manchester, but across UK hockey. 
names like Frank Peterangelo, well known. Our own Paul Ferron played for them and various other names like Rob Wilson all played for the Manchester Storm during their glory years at the MEN Arena. And now they're back under the stewardship of Neil Russell. This footage, courtesy of UTV, goes all the way back to 2001 when the Belfast Giants took on the Storm here at the Odyssey Arena. Paxton Schulte scoring a hat-trick in this game. You see players such as Sean Behrens, Kevin Real. Schulte himself, of course, scoring that hat-trick would uh, wound up the Manchester Storm fans no end because he wasn't well liked amongst the Storm fans due to the fact that his time as a Bracknell B he caused a career ending injury to Brad Rubichuk, a star player for the Storm at that time. It's been 13 years since the Manchester Storm last entered this building and now they're back. We hope you enjoyed this little bit of Giants history looking back to the time of the Storm here on Belfast. Oh, no. I did. I just, this wonderful footage courtesy of UT. Right? Thanks, Ashley. Yeah. It's been almost 13 years since the Manchester Storm last entered this building, and now they're back to take on the Stenline Belfast Giants. We hope you've enjoyed this little bit of Belfast Giants history. Thanks to UTV for the footage. And we'll hand you now back to the commentary team here on Giants TV, powered by Cyril Johnson. And it's time for the first home game of the season here at the SSE Arena in Belfast. It's the Stenline Belfast Giants against the Manchester Storm. And I'm going to hand it up to your commentary team, Simon Kitchen and Shane Johnson. <laughs> 